All right, hey guys, welcome to a brand new Ed's Retro Geek Out. I finally found a way to go hunting, and it's over uh, at someone's attic. Uh, we've been connected for the past eight years. Uh, I've been buying stuff through this guy who has an amazing vintage collection. As you can see over here, he's got the Eternia set up. He's got like a US flag uh, and just tons and tons of uh, boxes filled with stuff that we're gonna discover together. So this is basically the first time I get to take a look at all these boxes. Usually we discuss some items, he picks them out, he maybe takes down another box that I can go through, but uh, this time around I get to take a look at the mutter load and just cherry pick everything. I told him I was looking for some Star Wars, some original ones because I never see those out at flea markets and he said I have some. He definitely had some gems in there. Most boxes were already sorted by toy line so that makes it just a bit easier to really go through everything. C come along on the journey. Hey so we found this I'm, I'm not sure if this is Tila. Uh, if, any, if anybody knows who this is, uh, it's basically one of these old carnival masks. I'm guessing it's Tila. It's got Mattel 1985 on there and what is it? Caesar? Caesar 1987 on it. Apparently it's Mattel, so it might be She Ra. Then we got some more He Man guys over here. So cool to see a little Thunder Punch He Man with the little cab gun. And yeah, there's loads of like German. Uh, VHS stuff uh, that seems to be more prominent over there for the He-Man license. There's also some cassette tapes and some 7-inch records which was kind of more like a thing uh, in France, at least for the French speaking uh, He-Man collector of the 80s. And another thing that was really popular over in the French part was uh, the Chevalier du Zodiac. So those are these little golden dudes right here, which I don't see too often, but it's not something I grew up with. So I'm not really searching for those, but they do look cool and they're heavy because they're like die cast. So it's pretty nice. So I did find some action figures here. I found the Hordak with most of its accessories, uh, which is probably why I'm gonna pick them up because mine is missing that little thingy, that little bat that goes on his arm. Then we got a battle armor He-Man. So cool that they just, you know, took those Mattel um, car, crashing cars things and they popped it in his chest. And then we got Blade from the movie, which is an action figure uh, I don't have, so pretty much need him. Okay, so I thought this box right here was basically just to put stuff up on, but it's also filled. <laughs> it's also just filled up with stuff. Fright Zone. Yeah. Yeah. It's got the chain. she <laughs> And the first couple things I had to pick up was just some He-Man stuff. Um, I'm always looking for the special kind of things that you don't see too often and he had one of these pins right here So this is a club he-man little pin just decided I need to have that so I picked it up also got a couple of these uh, Panini stickers for my Masters of the Universe sticker book that I'm still trying to complete uh, Hopefully this will help just a little bit and then, then in the end, I ended up finding one figurine that I did still need for my, uh, yeah, for, for my He-Man collection over there. Yeah. Uh, so this is Blade. He's based off of the movie. I guess he does come with a little bit more than just this one weapon right here. He has the little action where both of his arms move up and down like that. Yep. A bunch of battle cats so I was looking around for one that was looking kind of off and as you can see over here the yellow color is a bit more faded or a bit more uh, brighter and this is actually a Mexico um, yeah this is actually a Mexico uh, released battle cat so I got a France one I got a Malaysia one and I got a Taiwan one so I'll finally get to add this Mexico uh, battle cat to the collection it's sometimes just ridiculous how many variants we look for when we collect this stuff these are a couple of German um, magazines they're they're pretty much just really big uh, folders <laughs> uh, promo folders just 
exported toys, obviously. Uh, but it's cool. In, in Germany, you had like that whole tape culture where you get cassette tapes with the stories of Masters of the Universe on there. They had it for everything like Team and T. And then also needed to pick up this one because this is the new adventure one. Uh, don't see this too often. All the new adventure stuff is like pretty hard to come by for me, honestly. So when I saw this one, I had to pick up these two little magazine books. So yeah, <laughs> like I was saying before. It's not a lot, but it's it's cool stuff, uh, at least to me. That was the whole uh, that was the whole He-Man thing. I'm guessing because there might be more. And over here, the first thing we're hit with is a boxed Visionaries Dagger Assault, and on top is one of these cool things. So basically, back in the day, you used to have J. Joe knockoffs. One of those was Lannard Toys, doing loads of these. And I bought these back in the day because I knew when I would buy one G.I. Joe toy or ask my mom, hey, can I have a G.I. Joe, Joe toy? It'd be like, yeah, you can have one. And then over here, it's like the same price, but you get three figures. So it was always cooler somehow it was always cool to get these and I actually did play with these a lot I only had like four actual G.I. Joes they always rebranded these as well so this was Blade Warriors where you had the blue bruisers and the red renegades pretty nice pretty nice always cool to check out these bootlegs this is the little visionary set awesome and over here in the corner, there's two of these little super soakers with Ghostbusters 2 logo on it. So, not sure if these are official or not, but they look freaking nice. Oh yeah. When I saw this thing hanging around, I was like, this is a time machine. This immediately uh, took me right back to 1992 at one of the more discount-ish uh, stores we, we, we would sometimes ha head out to and they would have like a really big toy section now you could get some TMNT over there but mainly they had like the knockoff toys but these knockoff brands were actually quite quite well I mean like the accessories you would get with these blade warriors uh, it, it looks it looks pretty okay they, they always use like the same molds uh, so lanterns um, I, I know this guy, he's, he's got like 14 different color variations uh, and always, you know, this time they just pop, you know, skate blades underneath him. So, I mean, it's cool, but you have to get like the tree pack is something I, I, I just need to grab for, for the collection, obviously. Lots of tiny boxes in this box right here. Some Philips CDI games. Oh. Even a gun. Next box has a Famicom system in it. With the disc system? No way. Oh. It's got the disc system in it too. And then we dive into box after box of games and obscure toy lines. I should have probably picked up the Action Force stuff, but, but hey, you can't really pick up everything, right? Here we have some Action Force. No way. Awesome. Everybody's going crazy about Action Force lately, so pretty nice seeing these little fellas here. Something that looks like a Drifticon, but it ain't the guy, though. <laughs> One thing that caught my eye right away was all this KO stuff. Uh, I did an episode on Master of the Universe knockoff toys, but I didn't really get into this one. These are Defenders of the Planets. Let's just, let's just trail them all out there, just like this. So, Defenders of the Planets, um, these are some of the bad guys, I think. Uh, there's doubles in here, but I was like, how, how much do you want for the whole bag, honestly? Um, a, a big buddy of mine, uh, Chivaho Creations, he does really cool stuff with these, so I definitely knew like the doubles or the ones I didn't need for my collection are going to go to him, and he's probably going to do something really cool uh, with these molds. So yeah, I, I got most of like Defenders of the Planets uh, now. Uh, this one is obviously supposed to be He-Man. <laughs> um, but the cool thing about this is that they came with lots of these shields. 
some of them have like the armor but you know it's, it's, it's the, the tiny details that really do it these were some of uh these aren't imperial are they no they don't have like a little made in macau i'm not sure what macau is but that guy was made in there so yeah these two um i was thinking they were these were gonna be bigger but these were like men to, to have them seated on like battle cat <laughs> but as you can probably tell like oh there's a pretty big difference between these i know the imperial um i know the guys that did imperial the knockoff brand they had like bigger ones where they could actually fit on but it's cool to see them you know have a little armor thing these were probably used uh to be like some artillery i guess or did these really have a seat on them so these could ride on them uh maybe it's out of proportion but then again <laughs> battle cat was out of proportion for the original master of the universe i keep confusing where the camera is now these are probably the best knockoff things i've come across in a very long time these are like super soakers you know you would suck up water like this and then you spray it out like that what these did have was a ghostbusters 2 logo on it right here so that's pretty neat uh, looking really cheap but they're actually quite heavy so i think that they, they probably do job pretty well actually um as far as like weird ghostbuster knockoff stuff this is the best thing i've come across so i'm really glad picking this up there's also some tundra cats out there so i have to pick up this little burble already got this guy and i think i'm missing the blue one and then we can have like this short mini series or mini line complete this one seems to be like full pvc this one is like a little bit more plastic around it yeah so i'm going through these boxes and what do i find a hordak mask uh, but he didn't want to sell this he, he didn't want to part with it it's amazing to find this still in good shape on the back it's got one of the rock dudes on it and this thing is simply amazing but he didn't want to part with it so i, I kind of had to let that go but at least i know where it is i could probably check back with him like hey sure you don't want to sell that because <laughs> that thing is amazing that it survived the 80s and it's hordak he's He's my spirit animal. I need him. But out of that big box of just uh, weird stuff, I did find one of the comics I was missing. This is the the Dutch versions of Master of the Universe Marvel comics. So yeah, it's pretty nice. Number eight, He-Man fights the dogs of Skeletor. Apparently. So yeah. Actually, don't these dogs kind of look like these right here? They were onto something conspiracy now in these boxes i did pass up on lots of games some stuff was just out of my price range and uh yeah i wasn't really finding anything i needed although he did have a lot of games but i ended up walking away with two new games for the collection i walked away with super Aless. so this is a shooter for a 16-bit snes system i haven't tried it yet but yeah it was a good price it was uh definitely a great game definitely one i wanted to add to the collection and then uh one of the things i've been collecting for the longest time is game boy games and i'm actually pretty close to a full set combining ntsc and all the pal games and this one is called firefighter so yeah, pretty cool cover. Uh, what you basically do is you walk around a building uh, each time, you know, the floor opens up and you have to go uh, fight the fire over there. Um, there's also a SNES title that's kind of connected to this one, uh, which is pretty hard to get. Uh, this one is relatively cheap. But hey, it's been really tough getting this one. I'm down to like my last 18 games I need for a full set. So yeah, it just shows you when you connect with someone and you share a passion, which is toys in this case and games, uh, it can lead to really cool things for your own collection. And just when you thought you'd seen it all, you open up a box. That's filled with battle beasts. Don't you just love it when you find a box filled with battle beasts? And not just battle beasts, there's even some laser beasts in here and some awesome merchandise. So yeah guys, this is my little bundle of joy. What I found over there, battle beasts wise, I'll show you, but like the merchandise, this was like a, a lottery, a scratch lottery ticket where you could, uh, 
where you could actually win another battle beast. So in here is what you could scratch out. Uh, on the back it, it says, you know, all the other stuff that you needed to do when you did win something like this. But it's cool that this scratched lottery ticket is still existing, obviously. Um, this is going to look great in that shelf. Then another thing he had was a Battle Beast sunglasses for kids. So yeah, can you see that? Uh, like that, pretty awesome. I'm not gonna put these on because I'll probably break it, but yeah. Uh, this is something like whenever you would find this over at a flea market, you would really need to read it and connect. Oh, this is actually a Battle Beasts uh, little sunglass set, but this thing is amazing that, yeah. It's thanks to him that he was keeping everything so close together that I would actually recognize it as this is part of. Obviously, I found a couple of laser lights. They're not from like the later waves, so they're not super expensive, but still they're pretty hard to come by. And yeah, I got, you know, the pair, the mouse, the weird looking thing, and the fish kind of thing. So, eight new Battle Beasts added to the collection, which is freaking amazing. And then I probably should have taken a closer look at this Stunner Cat Stank. Uh, I, I should have grabbed maybe one of these Zoids because they look so cool. I never find those. Micronauts is also a toy line. I think it's a 70s toy line. It's also based off of Microman from Takara, actually, like Transformers is. This was one of like those first migrations of Japan toys heading over to the USA. Uh, obviously this guy was very lucky to start off collecting back in the 90s and one thing you could still see was like this shipping box of Care Bears so he used to have a ton of these things because what he would do is if it was cheap and you know one of these um, and one of these toy stores, these mom and pop toy stores would go out of business. He would, you know, buy the stock or he would, you know, buy part of the stock. And that's how he got really great deals on these things. Really cool to see an Eternia when it's completed. It even has the laser cannon windshield, which is apparently very tough to find. It's usually missing the US flag. I had never seen one set up before. It's huge. It's got the little speaker unit even in there and it's it's simply amazing to see what you know the big airships. As I was saying I was looking for Star Wars but we haven't found any but he says there's still an attic we can go to. So let's head upstairs to this you know Castle Grayskull looking attic and maybe there's some boxes in here as well. So up on the attic, there's also a couple more <laughs> toys out here. The first thing I see is a box with some mad balls, some dino riders, so you know, which I mean, we're gonna take a look at it, why not? This is looking very, very castle gray up here. I wonder who's in here. Ooh, and he's got a gun. So now I finally figured out what the, the whole reason why I was coming over here in the first place was to actually find some vintage Star Wars stuff because I never find it out here and he told me he had some and we finally found the box that he's keeping all these little wonderful treasures stashed in. So I'm gonna have to make a move on a couple of these. Uh, found a little R2-D2. Probably not gonna pick up like the stuff everybody's looking for because I'm starting out my Star Wars collection honestly but uh, hopefully I'll find some good stuff make some good decisions Like always, we're saving some of the best for last, like this Bucky O'Hare stuff in the box. And uh, some crash test dummies. Some crash dummies. I think I might pick up this little ducky right here because I don't have it. So I picked up this Dart Fader, uh, needed him because, you know, he's obviously <laughs> a really uh, well-known character. Picked up an R2-D2 who is kind of like scratched up, but it's still okay. Then I got Chewie, Chewbacca, 
I got an R2-D2, really nice shape still, because, you know, he's, like, chromed, but, uh, yeah, he doesn't have any scratches or anything, so he's in really nice condition. I picked up this guy right here with a weapon, picked up one of these tiny dudes, picked up this little Jawa, and I had to get my guy, my hand solo, needed to get him, uh, so, yeah. That was pretty neat. This, these are the first ones I'm buying. Maybe I missed out on some really good stuff. Leave it down in the comments below what it should have picked up out of these boxes that he had. Um, I didn't out of these boxes that he had, but I was like, you know, I'm just gonna get the characters I really want. Uh, and yeah, that definitely happened today. So I start my Star Wars collection. And the last box is filled with some Transformer goodness. And a couple Beast Wars thrown in. And then, you know, the last box we opened up was Transformers, but I was already like, you know, this is going to be costing me uh, a, a little bit much, so I'm not really going to dig into this box right now. I did already have a couple of other things set up that I was, like, interested in, and in the end, you know, with, you know, me buying the whole lot, he was like, yeah, I'll do those for a really good deal. He actually threw in this uh, little pamphlet bookie for Dino Riders, which is great. I got this guy from the Brave Star set. Um, not sure what his name is, but I hardly see any of these. So when he told me he was like semi-complete, I was like, okay, I'll, I'll have to get this one. Um, also picked up this ghost for the real Ghostbusters, and I picked up the little ducky from Bucky O'Hare. Yeah, that's pretty much it. All these pickups uh, have been great. I could have picked up more. I could have picked up more expensive stuff, but it was more like, what do I really want? This army builder foot soldier, which I haven't show you, shown you yet, but I've shown so many foot soldiers I've picked up already. So anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this little toy hunting video that was COVID free. That's why there's not a lot of interaction in the video. I do want to apologize for that, but you know, I just wanted to go out hunting, even if it's on my own. Not bring Matthew and Renzo along to do you know the funny gags and talks with uh, it's it's unfortunate but you know this had to happen I needed to pick up some stuff <laughs> thank you so much for watching leave a like leave a comment maybe subscribe to the channel and if you can do more you can always check out my patreon I hope to see you in the next video and yeah have a great day see you later bye